Hello, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 116. Uh, themes today is to get your bivalent Omicron booster by Halloween to protect Grandma, and the credit to goes to Dr. Ashish Jha, who, which coming up with, I think this is just the most clear, consistent message for everybody right now. Uh, and the reason by Halloween, of course, is that uh, then your peak immunity is going to be around uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, when you'd be most likely to be around family, and of course you don't want to spread it to Grandma. Uh, and if that's uh, if all you need to know, you can even stop listening here. Uh, the other thing, though, is there's a few lessons that I think we need to learn and uh, a little discussion about is the pandemic really over the few things you ought to concern can think about is you know we did learn some lessons uh, kind of like the Asian Asians learned a hundred hundred years ago at the last pandemic sometimes you need to wear a mask not all the time but sometimes so why when should you wear a mask uh, so the more in-depth of discussion as follows so uh, so first question, some people say, why a bivalent booster? Why did they make one to Omicron and the original strain? Well, one of the problems is that Omicron still is not mutating in a predictable fashion, and so it makes it hard to predict what's going to happen next. Uh, the progression this visual uh, uh, Dr. Caitlin Gettolini used in one of her re recent updates, you know, first uh, we started mutating toward alpha, beta went a different direction, then gamma yet a different direction, then delta went way off in another direction, and then suddenly Omicron went in another completely different direction. So they're not, uh, the Omicron is not mutating in any predictable fashion at the, yet at this point. So what they did is they made uh, a booster to the most recent uh, one we had at the time, BA5, but also boosting again the original strain because who knows next mutation could come off this way and not this way. And that's why we're going to be moving by bi having bivalent boosters. And when they're, they may change more in the fall, uh, the flu shot that you get every fall actually is against three or four strains, partly for that same reason. And so most experts are predicting that, that the Omicron boosters or, or COVID boosters in the, in the future will probably be uh, in the fall like flu, although we don't know that for sure, of course. Uh, we're not in a stable uh, pattern, which is one argument for why you, I'm not sure you can really say we're pat over the pandemic, because one of the things for endemic is things are more predictable, which they aren't yet. Um, so, of course, you know, there was a bit of a controversy because uh, President Biden came in and declared that the pandemic was over during an interview, but uh, some people would agree and some disagree. Uh, and these are uh, probably two opposing op-eds. They're actually not as far off as you think when you actually read the substance of them. Uh, I think sometimes maybe we need to quit quibbling over what the de definition of pandemic and endemic is because it's been so misused by politicians over the past uh, couple years. Uh, and we know that our presidents have a history. Uh, declaring premature victory only to have to backtrack and I uh, hope the hope he doesn't have to backtrack on this one but you know time will tell we'll see so if you get in the substance you know I, I one reason you might argue that the pandemic is not over is we're still having over 400 deaths a day that's a lot of deaths per day it's still in the top 10 causes of death but we also need to I get back to our normal lives for the most part but I don't think we should forget everything uh, and so uh, a few things to kind of keep in mind you know, yes, we are right now, uh, as of uh, on the New York Times site, 413 deaths a day. That puts it at 150,000, which is still one of the top 10 causes of death in the United States, even in year three of the pandemic. Uh, this uh, up, up in the right over corner for the first, uh, for 2020 and 2021, COVID was the third leading cause of death in the United States, above accidents and everything else. But still, it's, a, it's at a death rate higher than car wrecks and gunshots and things like that. So uh, I don't think you can act as if COVID doesn't exist. Um, it actually has precipitated one of the largest, basically the largest drop in American life expectancy since the last pandemic, uh, the flu pandemic of uh, 18, 17, or 1918 and 1919. Uh, so, you know, this is not, uh, I don't think it's completely over. However, I think most of us can return to our most our normal lives though too. Um, you know, one way that I might describe it, I've used this in the past to describe endemic, and the one example I use is that rattlesnakes in western Nebraska are endemic, but that doesn't mean western Nebraskans act as, act as if rattlesnakes don't exist. Uh, that's the tee off on hole one in Sydney, Nebraska. If you hit your ball over here, you don't go looking very hard for it because there might be rattlesnakes up there. So you still golf, but you also are smart enough not to go over there looking for your golf ball too hard. Uh, so COVID, kind of the same thing. COVID, we, we know how to deal with it now. You can go about your normal life for the most part, but just take some common sense precautions. Um, more and more data about the effectiveness of COVID vaccines. So I keep uh, putting out this uh, COVID mortality data for Lincoln versus the surrounding areas. And Lincoln, Nebraska has the lowest mortality rate around us. Uh, one unique thing is that in Lancaster County was the only county in Nebraska where more than half of the elderly population got that second booster, 58%. Nobody else was even close. And so that's why you see this divergence, even Bellevue, uh, which was neck and neck with us, despite being a younger county, will they have a higher death rate because they didn't vaccinate as well as us. Uh, another visual way of looking at it uh, for people who don't like seeing sheets of numbers, but kind of the same thing. We had a lower mortality rate for a reason. And also there's some economic benefits to this. So during my day job, I've shown this in the past, 
our accountable care organization has over uh, roughly 10,000 Medicare patients. Uh, they actually give us, because they, don't, they haven't been holding us responsible for COVID costs the last three years, they, they give us a quarterly report showing the costs of us, our population with and without COVID. So I can subtract that and see that our patients were cost, we had about COVID costs about $281 for our patients, whereas the rest of the country is over $500, saving a net two to $3 million why? Because we did such, well, one of the main reasons, we masked appropriately and had a higher vaccination rate, and it saved us a lot of money. Uh, the public use file that compares all the Nebraska's ACOs together, again, also shows COVID diagnosis and episodes. This is public data that you can be verified. So versus national averages, we had much lower rates of uh, COVID and COVID complications. Uh, the only one that had uh, rates that high was NPG Health, which is a rural uh, Nebraska ACO that has people, basically people covered in lower vaccination rate areas, unfortunately. So uh, it killed more people, cost more money, resulted in more complications. Uh, Brian Health still puts out its uh, uh, daily uh, census of, uh, and, of COVID patients and whether they're vaccinated or not. So despite most uh, people in uh, Lancaster County being up to date to vaccinations, only one of those people was in the hospital yesterday. The rest of them are all people who either unvaccinated or only had those one or two shots and didn't get their boosters. So again, uh, we could prevent a lot of hospitalizations, not just deaths, if people would just get up to date on their vaccinations. And right now it's real simple. Get your bivalent COVID booster before Halloween. Uh, so common myth still is yet yeah, the COVID shot isn't effective more. No, it's not effective against breakthrough infections. It's still highly effective against hospitalizations and deaths. Uh, and I keep trying to point out, you're not going to prevent all of these mild infections. And, you know, if it's just a cold, we're not that worried. It's deaths, hospitalizations, and long COVID. Uh, there's even some reports saying that long COVID may be, be part of our workforce crisis right now. There's a uh, some people are estimating a half a million to a million people out on disability because of long COVID. That's one reason we have a workplace shortage. So if we had been better vaccinated, our economy would be better actually. Uh, and again, even for children, so get the ch your children 12 and above right now should also get the bivalent booster. It's not as severe as elderly, but it is more severe than flu uh, by a factor of three or four. So still get your kid uh, that bivalent COVID vaccine when it's out and available to them. Um, what should we, you do versus have to do? Well, I don't worry about what you have to do. What should you do? Uh, this is what I do. So basically, I did get my bivalent booster uh, Friday last week. I uh, didn't have really any side effects other than a twinge in my arm. I also got my flu shot in the same arm uh, because we're likely to have a, a worse flu shot this year. Uh, Australia had a worse flu season again, so that probably we're maybe back to normal with flu seasons. So go get your flu shot and get your bivalent COVID booster. You can get them the same day and you can, you can get them either in different arms, the same arm. I actually don't think it makes, makes a difference. What else do I do? I still wear a mask in just a couple of times. One, I wear it in the airport from arrival to cruising altitude. I wear it at a healthcare facility. And if I'm in a local surge, let's say, for example, Eastridge Elementary has a big surge of COVID, I'm going to wear a mask if I walk into Eastridge Elementary just to get a little extra protection for myself. Um, so here is me at an airport. I wear it when I'm walking through the airport uh, at the jet bridge while we're boarding. But once you're up at cru cruising altitude, the ventilation system's pretty good. You're only going to expose to maybe the, the 10 people around you. And the ventilation goes uh, from that little hole in the top down to the floor. And so it's a really good ventilation system. So I don't worry so much about, uh, about it. Now, if the guy next to me is coughing, I'll probably leave my mask on. Uh, but if uh, nobody's coughing around me, I'll take my mask off during the, during the flight. Um, so again, but though I think we need to make sure, yes, uh, I live my life pretty much normal. We travel, we go out to dinner, everything else, uh, just like pre-COVID. However, there's a few things, and I think we need to not forget the lessons that we should have learned. Unfortunately, we may be backtracking on our vaccination rates because of this anti-vax uh, rhetoric out there. We need to not forget uh, what we should have learned by this. Uh, like I said, Japan, uh, China, Taiwan, they learned a century ago that you should wear a mask when you're sick so you don't make other people sick. Masks do work. Um, and we could, in the future, wear masks intermittently at schools to prevent not just COVID, but flu and other uh, viruses that are always going around. So if you've had an outbreak of some sickness at school, uh, I would, and you get that message, I'd encourage your child to wear a mask to school until things pass, because, hey, you want your kid to be at school and you want to be at work. Um, other things out there, again, for staying up to date, I don't record as many of these uh, episodes in the future. The two places I stay to stay up to date, I think your local epidemiologist, Caitlin Jettelina, has the best uh, source of information for the lay audience. She has great visuals. Uh, she writes very well. She's probably been one of the best inform information sources of the pandemic. If you're more from the clinical perspective, I, I think Dr. Dan Griffin's uh, This Week in Virology update is the best. And I listen to that uh, every, every weekend when I mow the lawn, basically. If you see me out there mowing the lawn with headphones, I'm probably listening to Dr. Dan Griffin's update. 
like him, I'm incredibly frustrated because it's unfortunate there's a lot of uh, medical folks who are not staying up to date and giving bad advice. Uh, almost every week he gets questions on people unfortunately dispensing bad medical advice. Uh, so maybe you do want to listen to this if you're a high risk person. Uh, one of the things that Heli harps on, which I also very much frustrates me, is prednisone has been proven to almost kill, to more, make you more likely to die when, when being used in an outpatient environment in the first week of a COVID infection. So do not uh, go to one of these physicians prescribing ivermectin or uh, hydroxychloroquine or zinc or antibiotics or prednisone as an outpatient cocktail for COVID. It either, either A, it's not going to help you or it is literally going to harm you. You want to see a doctor who's evidence-based and the evidence is out there and he usually reviews it each time. Uh, our ex infectious disease experts at the University of Nebraska have also put out this nice guideline. So if you are a high-risk person and you do get COVID, you should be considering uh, Paxlovid. Uh, that is the first-line treatment, which they've got listed right here. If you can't get Paxlovid because there are some interactions with other drugs, for example, then the next uh, treatment is remdesivir. If for some reason that's not available, there's a couple other options that are listed here. So this is the pathway you should be listed. It's right there on the internet, and I put a link to it in the notes section so you can look it up yourself. So if you're a high-risk person and you get sick, you might want to bring this little pathway into your doctor and make sure that they're following it. Uh, it'll, it may be updated, so this is the, the May 2022 update version. So if there's new updates, hopefully that they will, I'm sure they will update it in the future. So living with COVID for you, get your COVID bivalent booster before Halloween, wear your mask at the airport or when you're sick so you don't make other people sick. And if you're a high-risk person, talk to your doctor about a plan so that if you get COVID, what is your plan to do it? Are you a candidate for Paxlovid? How will you get access to it? Uh, that would decrease uh, the remaining deaths. Of those 400 deaths uh, that we're getting a, a, a day, half of those are because people aren't vaccinated. Another 100 are because people aren't up to date in their vaccination. And the last 100, most of those are people who are high risk who don't have a plan and don't follow through treatment, like things like Paxlovid or the antibody infusions when they're eligible, for example. So we shouldn't be having 400 deaths a day. We should only be having about 40. Uh, so the frustrating thing for me is, A, this is, is that this is preventable, but it doesn't worry too much because, hey, I've done my stuff to prevent it, and so should you. So you have some control about how to live with COVID in a smart way. So hopefully this is helpful to you. All the links are down there at the bottom in the notes section if you want to go review any of this yourself. Uh, again, uh, disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily the, the organizations I work with and for, but this is just you can verify who I am and that I'm not just a, an odd conspiracy theorist out there.